You heard the news, 230,000 in the ADP survey. Do you have a rock somewhere you're keeping all these people? Oh, where do these workers keep coming from when we have unemployment at 3.8%? Yeah, it's a really good question. It's one, these numbers keep surprising us. But this conference we're in right now, Reinventing Our Communities, that we're hosting in Baltimore, I think that's the answer. We're bringing more people off the sidelines who are, have dropped out of the workforce completely and bringing them back in. And so that's a good story. That's a good thing for the country. Can you keep that going? I mean, at what yeah. point does this sort of slow down? Well, eventually it'll slow down. I mean, we, I thought it would slow down, start to slow down sooner uh, than today, say. But eventually we'll get back to a number around 100,000, which is the steady state number. Uh, at the last Fed meeting, 12 of 16, Yes. Members of the Open Market Committee said we're going to have a rate increase probably in December. There were four who didn't. You've been advocating maybe we should go slower. Were you one of those four? I was one of the four, <laughs> yes. And I, again, I think it's just a question of timing. Uh, for me, my forecast right now is, and, and I had this in the beginning of the year, three this year, two next year, two the year after. Some have accelerated that pace. For me, I have not seen a acceleration of inflation yet. We're starting, we still see these good job numbers. So I don't think there's a rush. I don't think we have to rush the normalization process uh, going back to neutral. But again, I'll, I'm open-minded. I, I think if inflation starts to accelerate between now and December, I could support a December increase. Well, what are you looking for in a pause? I mean, we've got 3.7%, 3.8% unemployment. 200,000 people getting hired yeah. every month. I mean, what, what do you accomplish by waiting? Well, what do you accomplish by moving? I, mean, I can ask the opposite question. What do you accomplish by ex going sooner rather than later? Right now, there's, I think there's good news uh, in the economy. Um, I think there's some risk I continue to worry about uh, with the yield curve and inversion of the yield curve. So I would like to avoid that risk. So I just like to slow the pace. But financial conditions still extraordinarily loose after yes. all the, the Fed tightening. Uh, long rates are low. Are you having any effect at this point raising interest rates? Going another 25 in December, would it matter? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't, honestly don't know the answer to that question. But again, I think, there, yes, financial conditions are very accommodative. Um, we're moving the short end. There's a lot of reasons why the long end is not moving, including the flight to safe assets, U.S. Treasuries. So I think we just, I still think we can take our time in, in moving the rates up. You don't buy the argument that maybe the Phillips curve is nonlinear and that all of a sudden we could see inflation rapidly accelerate. No, not, I don't buy that right now. In fact, there's research out of our bank by Mike Dotsey, our head of our research group, uh, that the Phillips curve for the last several decades has not been a good predictor of anything. And why? It's very simple. If inflation's moving around 2% and you're trying to correlate something that's just bouncing around 2%, with another variable. You're not going to find anything. And that's sort of what we're seeing today. Well, how low then do you think unemployment can go? Yeah, so I think we'll get down to about 3.5 before we start going back up. And that'll happen sometime, say, the end of next year or maybe uh, the year after. Well, then when do we start to see wages rise? Yeah, so that's also a big question. There are a lot of reasons why we're not seeing wages rise. I mean, but fundamentally, it's productivity, right? And so productivity, and for the long run, uh, wages are tied to productivity. If we've not seen productivity move up substantially, it's starting to creep up. And the hope is that with capital deepening, particularly with automation, AI, et cetera, we'll see that number move up. I'm a little skeptical about that because, again, if that happens in manufacturing, great. If that happens in ag, great. 80% of the U.S. economy services, and we've not seen that service productivity number move much, if at all. One of the arguments for the president's tax cuts was it would create the capital deepening right. that would boost productivity. Are CEOs in your district telling you that's going to happen? Yeah, and they're doing it for a different reason. I don't think it's the tax reason per se. It's they can't find the workers. And so particularly a lot of the manu manufacturers I talk to, they're accelerating their pace of uh, bringing technology in, robots and so forth because they can't find the workers. Well, your colleague Eric Rosengren uh, at the NABE conference in Boston this week said uh, the biggest surprise to him is in his district, companies now have pricing power. They can raise prices and they're going through. Yeah. Same in the third district? Yeah, we're starting to see that. And some of that is due to the tariffs. Some of it is because of the tariffs. And what I mean by that is companies who are not really subject to the tariffs are kind of using this in some cases as an excuse saying, well, I have the opportunity to raise prices, so I'm going to. Was there a, has there been, put it this way, a change maybe in corporate psychology? For the longest time, it was bottom line, manage your bottom line, don't pay more, uh, keep costs contained. Now we see Amazon raising its minimum wage yeah. to $15. They're a, a big national employer. Uh, is corporate psychology changing or is this maybe a one-off? 
No, I do think it's it's the tightness of the labor market. Uh, and you look at the job openings versus the number of people looking for jobs. I mean, that's unprecedented in the history of that series. I'll give you one example. Uh, in Lancaster County, PA, a snack food manufacturer is paying $17 an hour for people to take pretzels off a line and put them in a box. And so this, you know, it, it, that gives you a sense of how tight the labor market is today. Well, uh, the neutral rate, uh, when you get there, uh, yeah. what is it going to be? Uh, and how fast do you need to do that? So I, I think we'll get to about 3% as a neutral nominal rate, uh, and so a 1% real rate. We'll get there probably by 2021, 20, somewhere around there. Um, I think we'll overshoot that a little bit, at least in our forecast. We'll maybe be a little tick above that, 25 basis points above that. But again, this is all subject to change, <laughs> given uh, what we learned, because we really don't know where that neutral rate is, right? Well, you've said you could go maybe 2.5% inflation for a while yeah. uh, above your target. Yeah, for a little while. I mean, again, it's, to me, it's all about acceleration. It's not about the actual number. And we're not seeing inflation accelerate dramatically right now. When you talk to corporate leaders, uh, are they fairly confident that you have inflation anchored at, that yes. the Fed will act so it doesn't affect their corporate decision making? Yeah, right now I am not picking up any signal that they think inflation is not uh, well anchored. The uh, Fed spent quite a bit of time at its last couple of meetings talking about trade wars. I presume you did at the, yeah, yeah. At the last meeting. Uh, what's the general feeling, what's your feeling about the impact on the economy? So I think the biggest impact is not the tariffs per se, it's the uncertainty. And so what I'm picking up and what we pick up both anecdotally and through our survey work is people pausing a little bit on capital expenditure, just trying to let that uncertainty resolve itself. That, I think, is a concern. Well, do you think they're investing in uh, human capital rather than machinery, plant, and equipment? Because at this point, it's just cheaper? Yeah, and it's, it's quicker. <laughs> I mean, it takes a while to bring the machines in, to learn how to uh, use those machines to increase productivity, as opposed to just bringing more people online. Are you willing to uh, um, consider the possibility that we're going to see, because of the tax cut, uh, an increase in productivity that will be lasting? We might. But again, I go back to it, the productivity of the services has to move. That needle has to move. Take the biggest part of the U.S. economy, health care. How do you improve productivity of healthcare? Well, you can ask the question, how do we even measure productivity of healthcare? So there's big sectors of the economy, uh, roughly 80%, where we have measurement issues, and there's doubt that we can move the needle on productivity substantially. Manufacturing, yes. Agriculture, yes. Services are a little more difficult. Well, everybody talks about the artificial intelligence, automation. You're releasing right. a new report yes. at this meeting. Uh, where do you see it going? So I think what we're already seeing that transformation happening, right? Uh, both you're taking retail jobs that were once in the center city and now they're logistics warehouse jobs and they're higher productivity jobs, right? Because you can move more people and, and the fulfillment centers can move more goods and products. Um, so I think we're going to continue that transition. Is it going to displace jobs or are, we, are people going to lose jobs to machines in a way that they did over the last 20 years? There will be some, uh, and, but I think more importantly, jobs will change. I mean, what you talk, when you talk to manufacturers, they're not replacing people with machines as much as putting the machines there to work with the people, right? It's, a, it's really enhancing the human capability. Those jobs will change, right? We'll still need people to, to, to ma maintain them robots. We'll still need people to do other things. And, and new jobs will emerge that we don't even know, right? So think about 20 years ago, how many web designers were there? in the world. Think about 10 years ago, five years ago, how many drone operators were there? I mean, so there'll be new jobs that we haven't even imagined today. Times are good for yeah. you, for the Fed, but you're paid to worry. What's your <laughs> biggest worry right now? So I worry some about uh, emerging markets and uh, some of the risk there. I do worry about inflation, maybe accelerating faster than at least I forecast. And um, I, the broad level of uncertainty that I'm hearing from people who are trying to make decisions, I think if we can create a more stable, certain environment, uh, that would be good for business and good for the American people. Any recession on the horizon? No, not in our forecast.